The thinker put a lot of thought in this one. Justin Fields is selfish, putting his own glory ahead of the health of the American people. Yeah, Justin Fields, nothing else. Uh, he, he is a glory hound for sure. Uh, just wanting to play football so bad and, and not taking everybody else's concerns into account. You're right. Even though uh, today he was on Good Morning America saying, hey, guys, just maybe don't go partying so much and you know maybe maybe observe some social distancing so that he can have his glory. Uh, as Steve already mentioned, he's had his Heisman Trophy robbed from him this year, and now he would just like to play a little bit of football, and, of course, that won't happen. And you know, now the question becomes, will he play in the winter? And, of course, nobody thinks he will, even though you know there would still be time. But I don't think uh, the, the, the agents and attorneys will allow him to do that. I about kicking and screaming, but you know, I, I would think if anybody would buck the trend, Justin Fields is the type of guy to do it. But um, it, it, I, I don't see it being uh, with a very high probability of where he would would be that guy. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, the reason we know who Justin Fields is is because he is a football player, and therefore he wants to play football. And if anything, he's got less motivation than a lot of other guys. He can sit around for five months go to the combine, go, you know, select whether he wants to throw at the combine, whatever he wants to do. He's a top five pick in the NFL draft. So he's not the one that's being selfish and leading any kind of charge for this. No. And as he said, as he said, he's doing it for teammates and seniors who didn't get their senior year. And so this is definitely not just about him. And I think in just a little bit of time, he's been at Ohio State. Even Ryan Day said he could have been a captain last year, but the rules said sophomores can't do it. So he's been more than just this selfish player where uh, you go back to like Terrell Pryor, who didn't have the best reputation while he was at Ohio State, and that's certainly not not been what Justin Fields is. He's been more in line with JT Barrett in terms of and Joe Burrow in terms of how players and teammates feel about him. Ohio State football talk here each and every week. Uh, please subscribe to Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. That way you know when we go live. Uh, we've got schedules to change uh, each and every week uh, that cause the uh, show to float from time to time, typically on Friday, but you never know. Therefore, you need to subscribe. Got Kevin Noon right next to me on top from Buckeye Grove. Please check out his work. Uh, Steve Hellwagon from 247 Sports. Bucknuts. Tony Gerdeman. Buckeye Scoop, uh, answering your questions. Mark, check your facts. Ohio State beat Alabama in the 2014 playoffs. I had really, did they? Did they? Spangler, listen, listen. When I speak, since Ohio State won the inaugural national championship, da, 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 college football playoff. These are the records. Okay. So I I think I'm. You know what, Mark? Hopefully, you're somebody typical... me right off here if I didn't know that game. Forty two thirty five. Got it. Yes, I I remember it. Typical ESPN guy trying to take a shot at Ohio State, like Mark, just always leaving the Buckeyes out in this conversation about the playoffs. I'm sick of it. Absolutely. I'm out of here. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. What else do we have that needs to be addressed in all this business? I just don't see in regards to testing, in regards to the 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 long term effects, anything that's gonna anything that can be proven or that's gonna change between now and December and January. I just think it really comes down to that as being the big all or nothing disclaimer in all this to say what is the Big Ten doing? Well, and we'll see if they're alone, if if the Big Ten and Pac twelve are alone here in the next few weeks and if they are, I'll still always expect, until I see them on the field, I won't expect them necessarily to be 100% playing until like next fall. Like we can, I'm going to preview the heck out of the fall or the winter season. That's what I'm going to do. And I'll throw out some depth charts and then we'll do some previews and we'll talk about it here. But I'll still be waiting, checking. You know, my emails and, and whatever to hear like, oh, no, it's, we're, just, we're just not going to be able to make it because practice is going to start in December. You know, I'm wondering what happens with basketball. Steve is talking about playing football during March Madness. Basketball practice starts in October. How can they be 
practicing if football can't? How can they be playing in November if football can't play until January? So what happens with Big Ten and Pac-12 basketball if, if they have, what, 16, 18 games? It, what kind of what kind of season will that be as they head into March Madness? Or we could – it could be May Madness next year with if everything gets pushed back and the basketball season gets pushed back. So maybe that wouldn't be too bad to have uh, some, some basketball later – in the year, because I think we all agree probably it should start later in the year. Start once football is over, because I don't need to be covering two sports. Granted, I'm not covering any sports right now. I don't need to be covering two sports at the same time. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But I don't know I'm what happens in November when basketball is supposed to be starting, because can you have basketball if you can't have football? Yeah, I think the key, the key to having basketball or having a winter football season um, to me is the numbers are going to need to go down. And I think what we're going to see on these campuses as we're seeing at North Carolina is the numbers are going to go straight up for a while and then they better go back down and flatten out a little bit and, uh, you know, go from there. So, um, I'm not an epidemiologist. I just did one on the internet, but, um, it seems to me that if they can calm it down and even not necessarily even have the vaccine, but just calm the numbers down to where the risk is infinitesimal, if people take the proper protocols, then, um, you know, we'll see. But college campuses are going to be hot spots, and um, there's just no way around it. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how you know, those schools that are playing football are going to juggle having guys constantly in and out of the lineup all season long because Nummy on their dorm caught it and now they've got it, you know, and for sharing, you know, a bar of soap or something or whatever. So who knows, but, um, or going to a party or whatever it could be. But, um, you know, it just, uh, we, we are in uncommon times. That is for sure. We are in uncharted territory and uh, darn it, I mean, I, I would have thought by this point at 52 years old, I would have seen it all. But this just uh, reinforces that uh, you know, there's no way you're ever going to possibly see it all because something new is going to happen to change your perspective. And, uh, you know, how are we going to look back on this? It's going to be shaped on how the season goes for those schools. And really, I think for Ohio State, um, you know, you look to 2021 and um, – you know, there's been no talk about that yet. Are they going to flip the Big Ten schedule back to what it was supposed to be this year? That would create a problem with the jigsaw puzzle of the non-conference scheduling because uh, you might have eight home games next year and only six the following year or whatever. You're going to have to start flipping those games too. And and I don't know that they're going to want to do that. So do they keep the schedule status quo or in that spring season play the schedule that was supposed to be played uh, for 2020. I guess that's what they do, and that's how you get around it. But um, I don't know that Ohio State's a top 10 team in 2021 with a brand-new quarterback. So uh, even if he gets to play seven or eight games in the spring, I'm still not sure with everything they're going to lose off of that team, off of this team, uh, I'm not so sure that, that they're a top 10 or maybe a top five team. I don't know. I guess it depends on how that youth grows up. Like if they roll through everybody in the spring, then you'd have to put them back up there in the fall, provided they did lose somebody uh, who was integral to the, to the progress, uh, a Master Teague or a C.J. Stroud or whoever it may be. You, you can't afford to lose one of those key guys in the spring. But uh, you know, if they play football, there's always that possibility that, that somebody's lost. And uh, so uh, that's the risk you're going to take if you play uh, in uh, February, January, February, March.